Chairman, uh, Mr. Morton, I will tell you from this vantage point, it does look like the decision to release detainees was a political determination and not a monetary determination. It appears to me that the release of detainees was part of a sequester campaign that included the fictional firing of teachers, the closing of the White House for student tours, the, the, the displacement of meat inspectors, and now we're going to release aggravated felons, some aggravated felons, onto the street. Now, I've counted six times you have said you didn't want to rob Peter to pay Paul. I don't want Peter or Paul to rob one of our fellow citizens because you guessed wrong on who to release. So, of the level, what is a level one violator? A level one uh, offender. First, I, I obviously disagree with your characterization about these being political. Well, that's fine. You can use your time to disagree with my and, characterization. Uh, don't use mine. What is a level one violator? With regard to uh, level one offenders, uh, they are aggravated felons. And how many were released? Congress. Uh, there are four presently. How many were released? Eight were released. We have four presently. Released. And, and, and what went wrong with the other four? What's that? Uh, wh why were there eight released and only four currently? So the two were uh, released uh, when the computer records um, were not uh, correct. And we went back and we looked at them and we brought them back in. One. Um, uh, was a uh, mistake, and then what kind of mistake? Uh, just where the instructions to the field were not carried out correctly. All right. So, if it's $122 a day to house four level one aggravated felons, then releasing them saves you what? About $600 a day. All uh, right. Each day, that's right. All right. You can't find $600 anywhere else in your budget? Um, we make determinations on a case-by-case -case basis. Can We've you got to make find $600 somewhere else in your budget? The question is whether that $600 is well spent on those people or someone else. And when it comes to somebody who's been a 44-year lawful permanent I'm not talking about the 48 years Was old. he a level one? I'm going to find $600. Was he a level one? Something else. Was he a level one, Mr. Borden? He is a level one offender. He was one of the four that you, that, that you released? No, that he, yeah, that he is released. That's okay. Right. Uh, Mr. Morton, who made the decision to release detainees as part of your effort to comply with sequestration? Uh, the determination was uh, made by Mr. Mead, the Executive Associate Director for uh, Enforcement and Removal Operations in consultation with the Chief Financial Officer. Who was John Sandwig? Uh, Mr. Sandwig works uh, for the Secretary. Were there any conversations with him? Not that I am aware of. Were there any conversations with the Secretary? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I think the Secretary has noted that she was surprised and regretted the timing and the notification, and I agree with that. If the release of aggravated felons does not rise to the level of something that the Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security should know about, what does rise to the level? Uh, listen, we uh, release people every day, and the idea that we are going to review uh, every single person that is released. You release thousands of people every day? We release uh, thousands of people every month. We operate in a system that we had and, and, 470,000 and, but, but you don't blame it booking. on sequestration, do you, Director Morton? What's that? You don't blame it on sequestration when you release the others. No. It's, not part of this, it's not part of this strategy to, to, to get the public fired up that mayhem is, is, is upon us, that we're closing the White House for tours, that we're firing teachers in West Virginia. We're going to have to release level one aggravated felons because of sequestration? Uh, first of all, that was never said. Um, and the system allows for the release on supervision of uh, people going through immigration proceedings. We are not detaining people for penal reasons solely for purposes of removal. And as I've said, the vast majority of people in proceedings by statutory design are not mandatory detention cases. Who are level two violators, offenders? They are m either multiple misdemeanors or uh, felons that Congress has defined as something other than And an DUI would felon. be a misdemeanor, right? DUI would First offense? How about second offense? Uh, depends on state law, but most times... Well, how about the states where you release people? 
Did um, you release any recidivist drunk drivers? Uh, yes. How many? Um, I don't have the exact number, but we have uh, released uh, many individuals who had DUI offenses. R repeat offender DUI? Uh, repeat offender DUIs. Most of them were single offenders, but some would be uh, DUIs. I would note, uh, for the record, Mr. Gowdy, Congress has not provided that a DUI is a ground of removal. In fact, most mis misdemeanors are not a ground of removal. It is the agency, by agency policy, that factors that in. Uh, I can't uh, order you removed for having uh, committed a DUI offense. No, you can't, That's Director, but you of certainly removal. can request a programmatic rescheduling so you can move money around. And this notion that you don't want to rob Peter to pay Paul, you could have easily done that. You could have found $600 to keep these level one violators from being released and don't act like you could not have. With that, I, Mr. <coughs> Chairman, I would ask unanimous consent to move in a document titled Addressing CR Issue Through March 31st and Sequestration from U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Thank you. Without objection, so ordered. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from.